गुड इवनिंग ऑल माई सेल्फ डॉक्टर अभिषेक तिवारी टूडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस मैन्युफैक्चरिंग प्रोसेस एंड इन दिस वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस मेटल कास्टिंग मोल्ड डिजाइन इन्वॉल्विंग फीडिंग गेटिंग राइजरिंग so this is the outline of the presentation first we are going to discuss uh, what is manufacturing process what are different types of manufacturing processes <coughs> then we will discuss metal casting and then we will discuss mold design involving feeding gating and rising so what is manufacturing process so manufacturing is an economic term for making goods and services available to satisfy human wants manufacturing involves a series of related activities and operations like product design and development material selection what materials we need for the manufacturing process and then process pl planning what are the different types of processes involved and uh, then inventory control what are the assets required uh, what are the different type of items required for the manufacturing process and then quality assurance after the product has been made <clears throat> you say manufacturing process uh, what is, how is its uh, uh, quality so that there is no complaints after it has been launched in the market and then finally the marketing part so the principal type of uh, manufacturing is uh, uh, can be classified in uh, three types uh, process type manufacturing fabrication type uh, uh, manufacturing and then uh, <coughs> assembly type uh, manufacturing so process type manufacturing involves continuous flow of materials through a series of process steps to obtain a finished product like chemicals and uh, fabrication type manufacturing involves <coughs> manufacturing of individual parts or components by a series of operations such as rolling machining and welding and an assembly type of manufacturing manufacturing is done <coughs> by putting together parts and components to get a complete product such as a machine so types of uh, manufacturing processes and uh, uh, it can be based on uh, constant mass processes it can be based on metal removing processes it can be based on uh, material addition processes so we if we consider constant mass processes uh, for example casting metal forming processes and powder metal processing and heat treatment so in casting uh, there are various types of castings like sand casting cell mold casting precision investment casting plaster mold casting permanent mold casting die casting centrifugal casting and in metal forming <coughs> processes there can be different type of metal forming processes like rolling drop forging press forging upset forging extrusion wire drawing sheet metal operations <coughs> and then uh, in uh, metal removing processes uh, as the term clearly defines that uh, we are uh, going to remove metal <coughs> in this process so like for example if we machine any component then uh, we are going to lose some part of metal so for example we do uh, turning in lathe machine so turning drilling milling shaping planning sawing brushing and all these processes we are going to lose some metal <coughs> second is grinding and finishing for example in metallurgy we do <coughs> sample polishing so in this also like we grind it against uh, amory paper and uh, <clears throat> third one is uh, unconventional machining and then uh, we can have uh, processes which are based on uh, material addition processes for example if you want to repair <coughs> any component then we can do welding or any elite processes for example we can do 
गैस वेल्डिंग इलेक्ट्रिक आर्क वेल्डिंग इलेक्ट्रिक रेजिस्टेंस वेल्डिंग थर्मिट वेल्डिंग कोल्ड वेल्डिंग ब्रेजिंग सोल्डरिंग देन सेकेंड टाइप इन दिस इज मैकेनिकल ज्वाइनिंग फॉर एग्जाम्पल वी कैन डू वोल्टिंग एंड रिवर्टिंग सो यू नो नट एंड बोल्ट एंड सो दैट काइंड ऑफ वोल्टिंग एंड रिवर्टिंग कैन बी डन then uh, we are going to discuss uh, metal casting so what is metal casting so metal casting is a process in which molten metal flows by gravity or <clears throat> other force into a mold where it solidifies in the shape of uh, mold cavity <clears throat> then uh, we have uh, so uh, in uh, metal casting Uh, first we melt the metal and then pour uh, it into a mold and then uh, let it cool so that it can solidify <coughs> then uh, casting includes uh, both casting of ingots and uh, casting of shapes so ingot it's a metallurgical term for example if we have some like rectangular bar kind of uh, uh, casting then it's uh, called ingot and the term ingot is usually associated with primary metal industries so it describes a large casting that is simple and safe and intended for subsequent reshaping by processes such as rolling or forging so this is a typical metal casting process in which we are <coughs> pouring the molten metal in this mold so this is the metal casting process so this is the typical metal casting uh, after we have done the metal casting process so now uh, we are going to discuss what are the different uh, parts involved in the metal casting first one is pattern so uh, we are going to discuss type what are the types of uh, patterns and allowances so <clears throat> a pattern is a full sized model of the part or the model of uh, metal casting that we have to manufacturing <clears throat> we have to manufacture and it is enlarged to account for uh, shrinkages and uh, machining allowance in the final casting then uh, <clears throat> material used to make patterns include wood plastics and metals wood is a common pattern but it tend to warm warp warp so it can be subjected to warping and uh, which is uh, not good for a pattern to warp so <clears throat> it is uh, it can be abraded by sand being compacted around it thus limiting the number of times we can use it and uh, metal patterns are more expensive but they may last longer and plastic represents a compromise between uh, wood and metal so it's in between the wood pattern and the metal pattern <clears throat> so now we can have a solid pattern or a split pattern so uh, as we can see in this picture this is a solid pattern and this is a split pattern so <clears throat> the simplest <clears throat> pattern we can think of is made of uh, only one piece and is called solid pattern which has same geometry as the casting and it is adjusted in size for sinkage and machining although it's easy to fabricate it is not the easiest to use in making the sand mold <clears throat> determining the location of uh, the parting line between the two halves of the mold for a solid pattern can be a problem incorporating the gating system and screw into the mold is left 
to the judgment and skill of the foundry worker in case of solid pattern and solid patterns are generally limited to very low production quantities <clears throat> so generally we use this kind of split pattern we we have the two halves of the pattern so <clears throat> split pattern consists of two pieces dividing the part along a plane coinciding with parting line of the mold Split patterns are appropriate for complex part geometries and moderate production quantities. Parting line of the mold is predetermined by two pattern halves rather than operator judgment. So next one is uh, <clears throat> match plate pattern. So for higher production quantities, match plate pattern or we can say cope and drag patterns are used in match plate or cope and drag patterns the two pieces of the split pattern are attached to the opposite side of the wood or metal plate holes in the plate allow the top and bottom cope and drag sections of the mold to be aligned accurately so so that uh, these are aligned so in this uh, we have this match plate pattern so in this we are matching with the plate <clears throat> cope and drag pattern are similar to match plate uh, pattern except that split pattern halves are attached to separate plates so that cope and drag sections of mold can be fabricated independently so in this actually in match plate uh, pattern we have only one plate but in uh, cope and drag pattern we have two plates So it is uh, like uh, one type of uh, match plate pattern, but we have two plates instead of one plate. The graphic include gating and riser system in cope and drag patterns. Then, <clears throat> while making pattern. Certain dimensional allowances must be given in the pattern so that casting obtained is of required specifications. These include shrinkage allowance, draft or taper allowance, machining allowance, wrapping or shaking allowance, distortion allowance. <clears throat> Now we are going to discuss shrinkage allowance. so allowance added to pattern to compensate for metal sinkage that takes place while the metal solidifies <clears throat> all metals except bismuth and gallium solidifies and the contraction of metals and alloys is always volumetric but the contraction allowances are always expressed in linear dimensions next is <clears throat> draft or taper allowance so the taper provided on vertical surfaces of a pattern to facilitate its easy room removal from the mold without excessive wrapping or breakage of uh, kvt edges the amount of taper varies with type of pattern the taper on uh, inner surface should be greater than on the outer surface the amount of taper varies from 0.5 degree to 1.5 degree and may be reduced to less than 0.5 degree for larger castings wooden patterns require 
more taper than metal patterns because of greater frictional resistance. Then we have machining allowance. So extra material provided on certain details of casting so that it may be machined to exact dimensions and it depends on uh, factors such as casting process, size of casting, degree of finish, machining method and metallic alloy from which casting is made. The amount of this allowance varies from 1.6 mm to 12.5 mm. The ferrous metals require more machining allowance than non-ferrous metals. So for example, for iron, stainless steel or different type of steels, more machining allowance is required compared to, for example, for non-ferrous uh, uh, metals like aluminium, copper. Then <clears throat> we have raping or seeking allowance. So this is provided to compensate for enlargement of mold cavity because of excessive wrapping in small and medium sized castings. This allowance can be neglected. But in larger castings, this allowance is considered by making the part slightly smaller than the casting. The allowance is a negative one as the pattern is made smaller to allow seeking operation. Then we have distortion allowance. So it is provided on the pattern to compensate for possible distortion of the casting because of unequal cooling rates of different sections of the casting and uneven internal stresses. This allowance depends on the judgment and expertise of the pattern maker, maker who understands the shrinkage characteristics of the metal. So a typical metallurgist can decide what distortion allowance is required for making a pattern. Then we have sand casting. And uh, on this we are going to discuss what are the sand properties. So <clears throat> what are the sand properties required for uh, doing sand uh, casting? First is permeability. This property allows gases to escape easily from the mold. Higher the silt content of the sand, lower is permeability. If mold is rammed too hard, its permeability will decrease. Then second point is strength and cohesiveness. So this is defined as a property of holding together of sand grains. A molding sand should have ample strength so that mold does not collapse or get partially destroyed during conveying, turning over or closing. The strength grows with density clay content of mixture and decreased size of sand grains. Then we have the third property is reflectiveness. So it is the ability of molding sand mixture to withstand the heat of melt without showing any sign of softening or fusion. It increases with grain size of the sand and its content and with the diminished amount of impurities and silt. Fourth property is the plasticity or flowability. 
This property allows the sand to easily take any desired shapes. Fifth property is the collapsibility. It is the ability of the molding sand, molding sand mixture to decrease in volume to some extent under compressive forces developed by shrinkage of metal during freezing and subsequent cooling. Collapsibility permits the molding sand to collapse easily during shake out and permits the core of the permits the core to collapse easily during its knockout from the cool casting. Lack of collapsibility may result in formation of cracks in the casting. It depends on the amount of quartz sand and binders and their type. Sixth property is coefficient of expansion. Sand should have low coefficient of expansion. Seventh property is chemical resistivity. Sand should not chemically react or combine with molten metal. Eighth property is adhesiveness. It is the property of the sand mixture to adhere to another body. Sand should cling to the sides of molding boxes so that it does not fall out when flasks are lifted and turned over. It depends on the type and amount of binder used in the sand mixture. Now, what are the constituents of sand? Sand in its natural or moist state is called green sand. It is a mixture of silica sand with 20 to 30 percent clay having total amount of water from 6 to 10 percent. Composition of green sand is as follows. Here silica has up to 75 percent content and clay is about 8 to 15 percent and bentonite is between 2 to 5 percent and coal dust is between 5 to 10 percent and water is between 7 to 8 percent. A large proportion of uh, silica gives a refractory sand but if in excess it destroys its cohesiveness. The presence of alumina gives the sand its clay content which acts as a binder but if it is in excess then it destroys the permeability of the sand. Metallic oxides and lime if it is in excess then it impairs the refractory quality of the sand and increases its fusibility. Now what are the steps involved in the metal casting? So first is preparation of a pattern. Second one is preparation of molding sand. Third one is preparation of mold and pores. And fourth is melting the metal. Fifth one is pouring of metal into mold. Sixth is cooling and solidification. Seventh is removing the casting from mold. Fatling. Eighth is flat, fatling. So fatling is a very important step. It is cutting of the unwanted projections in the form of gates, sizes, etc. And ninth is heat treatment. And tenth is testing and inspection of any defects in the metal casting. So first is <coughs> mold core making. Molding is an art of making sound mold out of sand by means of pattern and course so that metal can be poured into molds to produce casting. To form the mold cavity, traditional method is to compact the molding sand around the pattern for both cope and drag in a container flask. 
The packing process is performed by various methods. The simplest is hand ramming accomplished manually by a foundry worker. Various machines have been also developed to mechanize the packing procedure. So this is typical mold making. <clears throat> this is the plan of the mold box. And uh, this is the section of mold box assembly. This is scope and track two parts of the mold. And uh, this is runner, riser, bent holes. So this is scope, this is drag, this is facing sand, this is box fitting uh, sand. So this is the complete mold ready for pouring. An alternative to traditional flask for each sand mold is flask less molding, which refers to use of one master flask in a mechanized system of mold production. Each sand mold is produced using the same master flask. Cores are made in simple wooden metallic or plastic core boxes. The simple method of core making is similar to that of mold making. The sand mixture is rammed into core box with a wooden rammer. Sometimes cores may need reinforcement with wire or nails in order to provide internal support so that they may not collapse while handling. The core sand mixture is rammed by hand or pneumatic rammers for production work, machines are used for core making where core sand mixture is rammed by jolting, squeezing or blowing. Molds are of following two types, temporary molds. These molds are destroyed at the time of removing castings from them. For example, sand molds and uh, permanent molds. These molds are used in die casting and these molds are used uh, time and again and examples are metallic molds. Sand molds are often classified as green sand, dry sand or skin dried molds. Green sand molds are made of a mixture of sand, clay and water. The word green referring to mold containing moisture at the time of pouring. A dry sand mold is made using organic binders rather than clay and the mold is baked in a large oven at temperature ranging from 200 degrees centigrade to 320 degrees centigrade. Oven baking strengthens the mold and hardens the KFT surface. A dry sand mold provides better dimensional control in the cast product compared to green sand mold. Compared to green sand molding. In a skin dried mold, the advantage of a dry sand mold is partially achieved by drying the surface of a green sand mold to a depth of 10 to 25 millimeter at the mold cavity surface using torches, heating lamps or other means. A special bonding material must be added to sand mixture to strengthen the cavity surface. Additionally, chemically bonded molds have been developed that are not based on either of these traditional binder ingredients. Some of the binder material used in these no bake systems include furan raisins consisting of furfural alcohol, urea, and formaldehyde, phenolics, and alkyds oils. So in this you can see that we have this drag half of mold made by hand and drag is ready to be rolled over in preparation for 
making the cope. This is cope mold rammed up. Here you can see in this figure. Now, according to the state of the core, cores may be classified as green sand cores, dry sand cores, oil sand cores, loam cores, metal cores. According to core position in the mold, cores are classified as horizontal core, vertical core, balanced core, cover core, hanging core, wing core. So these you can see in the picture. This is the horizontal core because this is horizontal. And this is the vertical core. <clears throat> this is balanced core. This is cover core. This is hanging core. And this is wing core. Now we are going to discuss the gating system. So it is the passageway in the mold melt for carrying molten metal to mold KFD known as gating system. Any gating system should aim at providing a defect free casting. So here you can see this is the screw, this is pouring basin, this is scope, this is drag, this is in gate, this is riser, and this is screw base or well, this is choke, this is runner, this is skim ball, and this is small cavity, this is the parting line, and this is the molding board. So this is a typical metal casting system. Now, basic elements of gating system are, as I discussed in the previous slide, is pouring basin, put the screw, screw base or well, runner, skim bob, gates. So these uh, I have discussed in the previous slide also. The pouring basin in this uh, molten metal from ladle is poured into the pouring basin. From here it moves into the screw and through the runner to other areas. And in the screw, the screw provides an entrance to mold cavity for the molten metal. It is connected to the mold in cavity by a gate or series of gates. A screw base or bell, it is for enlargement uh, along a runner whose function is to trap heavier and lighter impurities such as dross or eroded sand. It prevents uh, these impurities from going into mold cavity. Now gates also called the in, in gates are openings in this figure we can see here this is the in gate so and these are the openings through which the molten metal enters the mold cavity safe and cross sections should be such that it can readily be broken off after casting solidification and also allow the metal to enter quietly into mold cavity. Gates may be top, parting, bottom type or step type. So here we can see this is top gate, this is parting gate and this is the bottom gate. This is step gate. So we have gate and steps. Now we discuss the riser. So this is the top riser, this is the end riser, this is the parting line. So these are the reservoirs designed and located to feed molten metal to solidifying casting to compensate for solidification shrinkage. It is a hole cut or molded in the cope to permit the molten metal to rise above the highest point in the casting. There can be various types of riser like top riser, 
डेड और कोल्ड साइड राइजर लाइव और हॉट ओपन राइजर ब्लाइंड राइजर इन ऑल कास्टिंग प्रोसेसेस मेटल मस्ट बी हीटेड टू मोल्टन स्टेट टू बी पोर्ड और अदरवाइज पोस्ट इन टू द मोल्ड so this uh, i discussed uh, about the uh, metal casting now in the next lecture we can discuss about uh, melting of metal in the metal casting process and the various furnaces involved in the melting of the uh, metal for uh, melting of the metal for metal casting process this is how we will pour into the uh, gating system or uh, in this we can uh, this is the pouring cup actually so we can pour the metal so uh, we will discuss some uh, questions based on uh, gate examinations during the metal casting of a slab the thickness of uh, solid formed after time t is proportional to t raised to power 1 by 3 t raised to power 1 by 2 t, uh, t raised to power 1 t raised to power 2 so for casting of a slab volume upon area and that will be equal to thickness is directly proportional to t raised to power 1 by 2 where v is the volume a is the area and t is the time taken for solidification so the correct answer in this is b now question number 2 in a sound casting the last liquid to solidify is in runner riser gate vent for a casting with no defects the metal in the riser is provided with facility to solidify last so as to provide excess liquid metal to accommodate shrinkage of the cast product after solidification so the correct answer is riser correct answer is b question number 3 riser is not required for castings of grey cast iron white cast iron aluminium 4% copper alloy aluminium 12% si alloy so risers are added as reservoirs to feed liquid metal to solidifying castings as a means of compensating for solidification shrinkage and in grey cast iron actually grey cast iron expands during solidification and thus risers should not be used so thank you for your attention